Hello, you are watching MMA Crips Fight and Talk. On today's show, I'll be speaking with Bellator Lights Heavyweight and the finalist in the Bellator Season 10 Lights Heavyweight Tournament, Mr. Mohamed King Mo Lawal. Welcome to MMA Crips Fight and Talk, Mo. Hey, man, what's up? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Uh, it's our pleasure, Mo. Thank you very much for speaking with me today. Now, let's start the show with your bout against Mikhail Zayats at Bellator 110, Mo. In a pre-fight interview yeah. with Frank Trigg, you mentioned that you would have to grind out a victory against Mikhail. Now, in round one, it was certainly anything but grinding out a victory, as you both looked like you wanted to take each other's heads off. Was that your intention, Mo, or did you just get caught up in the action? Well, no, the thing is, um, the mat the mat was slippery, you know what I'm saying? So I, I felt like weird trying to come forward. I tried to come forward, and I tried to throw my jab. With my right hand, I slipped. And if you watch the fight, you know, watch the card. Everyone was slipping all over the place. Mapumbu, when he fought Rampage, threw a, 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 a leg kick, and, and Rampage threw a right hand, and he slipped and fell. You know, um, the fight before mine, you know, um, the, the local guy and, 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 and Nunez, they're slipping all over the place. You watched, um, you know, just um, Dan versus Richmond, people were slipping. And, and then the second and third round of my fight, it just, just the, the canvas just felt funny and, it was just weird trying to take any risk or trying to push any type of action. Even when I shot, when I got to his leg, I felt I was going to slip, so I couldn't really drive through. I just felt, I felt off balance. I felt I was ice, ice skating on the canvas. Did you know about this before you actually went out to the cage from the previous boats? Did oh. anybody from the Bellator staff mention this to you? Well, no, people from the fighters were complaining. I heard it, and I was like, I was like yeah, because, you know, usually people could play on... And I'm like, nah, well, hopefully it'll be different by the time I fight. And people complaining. Well, while you're out there, I'm like, okay. I was trying to tell my corner, hey, before the fight, I was like, pull out of the ground so I can go off the because they're, they're kind of right. And after that, in between rounds, I was trying to tell them to pull out of the ground so I can wipe my feet because the, the, the canvas just felt real, real slick. It just didn't, it didn't feel right. I, I felt uncomfortable trying to plant my feet and throw anything with power. Unless it was a jab or a body shot. Other than that, it, it just felt, I don't know, it just felt funny. Did it affect your fighting style at all, Mo? Did it make you change up your game plan yeah. or anything? Yeah, oh, oh, it's just like this, right? When you watch, watch Rampage versus, um, versus Lupumbu, the reason why he didn't throw a punch, he didn't throw one punch. You know, so if, you want, if, you're, if you're a power fighter, you need to have to have your feet set to throw a power. Even if you're speeding, you can move your feet, you get to be balanced. If you're moving, you're slipping, or you, or you feel out of balance, you can't really, you can't maneuver, and you can't really throw with any speed. If you're trying to throw a power and you're, 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 you don't have a seat set, you can't throw with any power. You know what I'm saying? You'll slip and fall. Wow, wow. You want to expect that from Bellator. That's crazy. Well, you know, I want to say this, Bellator, when it happens to all organizations, um, maybe they had too many logos on the mat because cause usually they have logos, but this last night they were more logos than normal. Is maybe because they had too many logos. I don't know. Is the testing of the mats beforehand, like somebody go and check it out, make sure everything's okay? Well, the thing, is, the thing is, you can do that, but don't forget, if you're in the main card, there's probably like seven or eight fights before you, so people just sweat, the blood, and yep. anything that falls off the, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's going to get worse as, as the fight goes, as the card goes on. And pretty much people, the, the, the main event gets the worst mat possible. The first fight is the best mat possible because the mat is going to touch pretty much. Well, going back to your fight with Mikhail, uh, I noticed you landed a few body shots on Mikhail. Now, Mikhail doesn't have the set of abs that you do, Mo, but was you targeting his midsection? You know, cause it's a little bit tubby. Was you targeting it on purpose and seeing how it held up against your punches? Yeah, I, you know, I just want to, you know, I was trying to think. I'm not going to lie. My, uh, my corner, you know, an American top team, they're like, Mo, we got to work on your cage control and work on you getting through the cage. So, for pretty much, for a good science, I was trying to be smart, but at the same time, I was trying to implement the game plan. Because I've never been a man to, to shoot somebody in the cage and just, like, hold man. But, you know, we tried working that just for the fight, you know, really, just literally. Um, I remember the two years before, I was working on shooting certain shots. And, like, my, my coach came to me, like, nah, Mo, shoot a single leg, drive, get me to the cage. That's what we're going to do. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, we're going to we'll work on that. And we worked on that through the camp, but then just, you know, when he got there, got there to the venue, um, we worked on that a little more, and that was the game plan, pretty much. You know, he well, wanted a game plan, that's so why executed. I noticed Mikhail Zayats was constant with his kicks throughout the fight, Mo. Did 
Did you suffer any damage from those kicks? No, 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 no damage. Uh, uh, he threw kicks and they were hitting me in my kneecap and my shin, which is a funny thing because I was like, man, I'm like, this fool could kick hard. I was like, he's kicking my kneecap and my shin. And I'm like, is he keep on kicking? Because usually he throw a kick and it hits first his kneecap or his shin, they stop. And he kept on throwing. And I was like, okay, well, it's not hurting me, no damage whatsoever. And he hit my shin and my kneecap. So I'm like, cool, you know, it's going to hurt him. <laughs> Well, we saw what happened to Anderson Silva. Yeah, I want to see that again. Yeah, that was rough stuff. Now, I noticed in the fight, Mo, that Mikhail was, you know, he was a tough cat to take down. We know these sandbo guys, you know, they're well-rounded, they're tough, they're tough guys. How impressed was you with Mikhail's takedown defense? Do you think the the map played more of a part, or do you think it was more Mikhail? No, no a little bit. Mikhail was really doing, but a little bit of the mat. And two, just the single leg is hard to finish, but so that's why whenever I shot, I seem like you try stuff and you try to leg out. And when you try to get out, I just like go and throw punches. I really never try to, I commit just enough, but I committed enough just to keep going backwards. You know, I really, I really wasn't like, you know, I wasn't really looking to say this too, uh, too much. I was more about, more about the, me engaging and making him go backwards. Well, it seemed like Mikhail's aggressive style started to work against him because I noticed late in round two, he looked to be fading in the fight. Did you pick up on this, Mo? Because I noticed you went through a few takedowns late in round two. Did you notice he was starting to fade? I saw him starting to fade at, um, at, at, the, at the end of round one. Did you feel at any point that you had the fight in the bag? Like, this is my fight now? Yeah, after the first round, that's like I did. You know, even though it was a slow round, and then the second round, after the second round, I figured, you know, started clicking. I was like, all right. And he was throwing, and, and, and like, I know he'd blow it up. Like, before the combo, he'd sit, and just go. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> he missed, miss, miss. And I'm like, okay, miss, miss, miss. Because he looked at like, the, the, when he threw his furries, that's when he landed. He, one time he punched me, and the crowd kind of went like, ooh. But he hit my shoulder. Cause I did the the, the shell. I, pull, I pulled my shoulder over my chin, and his right hand hit my shoulder. I just kind of walked forward, and then I faced him. But really, I feel like you know, I did a good job with my defense, and I didn't really get hit clean. I made a mess. I touched him up with my jab. A few shots to a few, like, right hands, left hands, the body, and then just could case control and need them. And, you know, I got a few takedowns here and there, but they were, like, messing the home down. But I just controlled them pretty much. Well, I was fairly confident that you was in control of the fight and you actually won the fight. But we still had a few questionable judgings on the Bellator 110 card earlier in the night. Obviously, you're coming off a, a decision loss to Emmanuel Newton, which you felt you should have won. Was you worried at all that the yeah. decision might not go your way, Mo? Uh. No, I thought, no, I didn't know what to expect because I thought I won, but, but I knew, but, you know, Zayas looked at me like you won. Zayas Corner said, good job, you won. And I figured I won, but, you know, I heard people saying that they thought that I lost. Some, I heard some of the guys are hating on me. They're like, yeah, I thought Mo lost off two rounds, and then, you know, some guys like, you know, but for the most part, I've heard the majority of people say it's uh, won, but, you know, there's people that don't like me, and, you know, the fight wasn't like, a fight, and they just felt like Zayas did enough to, my I don't know what he did, you know, I mean, he headbutted me and it caused me to bleed. Um, he really didn't want anything solid, you know, but, you know, I guess people just want to see what they want to see, you know. Haters, we call them trolls. We get them all the time, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, moving on to your face-off with Quentin Jackson, did you expect Rampage to act the way he did? No, you know, he's the thing, right? Because they're like, Mo, you're going to go in the cage. Rampage, gonna, like, Jimmy's going to talk. Rampage's going to talk, and you're going to talk, and then that's the you know, face off. So that's all I think we're going to do. And I get in the cage. I know that Rampage takes the microphone from Jimmy. So I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm going to see you going to say that. And, they, and then I'm going to talk. So he saw what I walked up to him. And I started about to raise my hand up to take the microphone because I thought that he was done talking. And he kept on going. And I'm like, who's he yelling at? And I heard the crowd get loud. And I started getting mad because I was like, are you going to let me talk? You know, and then and then like you know, he was yelling out, yelling. People came to split us apart, but you know, to me it was just it was kind of like it was kind of stupid. What was the point of having me there? Just get yelled at. You know what I'm saying? Like they told me that he was gonna talk, and I was gonna talk. You know what I'm saying? So that didn't happen. Now there was a history of bad blood between you and Rampage Jackson. Could you tell us how that all started, please, Mo? I understand it might have involved Rashad Evans when he was coaching against Rashad on the Ultimate Fighter season ten. Well, I, I I don't know. I saw that, you know, it started with him, like, you know, we're, you know, um, he was trying to make fun of me or something like that. So I made fun of him. We went back and forth. And I wrote something on a piece of paper that he was going to do an autograph something at, and he saw it and got mad. 
And then, uh, I don't know. It's weird, man. I don't, really, I don't really remember. I just thought it was, it was like, off of some, like, just us making fun of each other and just got just went to a whole different level, you know? I don't really remember the story because it happened a so long ago, but, you know, it's whatever. It's, you know, it is what it is. It's a past that, you know, I'm not going to be embarrassed. Like, I, like, you know, he tried to embarrass me on Friday. You know, um, come, come May 17th, I'm beating him. Well, the thing is, Mo, you actually seem to make friends. Uh, what's an interview with you both? You both sat there, you're talking, you're having a bit of good banter between each other. Now, I noticed you was both under the Elite MMA brand. Did you and Quinton, like, make a deal to squash the trouble between you both? No, well, no, I think we're just going to be cordial. That's how it was. Like, you know, the beef was like, you know, it was, you know, it was like whatever. It was be cordial, respectful. That's, what, that's, what, that's how it was. <clears throat> and that's that was all. I thought we had an understanding to be respectful somewhat, but I guess the understanding is like, oh, I'm down, you know what I'm saying? It was just a one-time thing, hey, you know, this would be cool for right now. That's how it was. Well, I noticed in a pre-fight interview, Quentin Jackson mentioned that half the reason he went to Bellator was to fight you. What do you make of that comment from Quentin Jackson? Oh, that's great, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm glad he came. You know, he, can, <laughs> he can get the fight. That's great, Quentin. You got the fight now, so, you know what I'm saying? Put up a shut up. Well, we all seen Quentin Jackson's fight against Christian Mpumbu. Well, when he defeated Mpumbu, he stood over him, yelling at him while he was unconscious. What did you make of that, Mo? Nothing. Nothing, because that would be me. I, I can't make that. That ain't, ain't going to happen to me. I know that. You know, I put like this. I put like this. Mpumbu went through a kick. Grand Prix have been down one to nothing. And looked like he probably been tired and probably lost the fight because... But Pumbu control, was controlling that first round, even though nothing was happening. And Rampage was like putting his hands up, saying, "Come on!" Rampage's hands were up, but he even was swinging. So, you know, it takes two to fight. Now, Quentin Jackson, he keeps referring to himself as the monster. He keeps calling himself the monster. Do you care to comment on that, Mo? No, yeah, last time I said the monster was Kevin Randleman. <laughs> He's the real monster. Yeah. Well, he's sponsored by Monster Energy Drink now. Do you think that has something to do with it? Maybe he's trying to tie it in or something. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. You know, Monster, Monster. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it could be. That could have been it. It's not scaring you, is it, Mo? <laughs> Hell no. I, 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 I scare nothing. Well, I read about your staph infection. Yeah, you've been through that. I'm pretty sure, you know, nothing scares you no more. Speaking of the staph infection, has that sort of helped you with any goals in mixed martial arts? Uh, you, you know what? To, uh, to, to, keep, to keep staying positive and keep having fun because at one point I was like down in the dumps thinking that my career is over with and I was, I was kind of negative, you know. But, but, when I went, but, I, the, but the, I tried my best to keep staying positive and good things happened. Well, moving back to Quentin Jackson, there's been rumours that you will face Jackson in his hometown of Memphis, Tennessee. Would you like to face Quentin in Memphis, Tennessee? I don't care. I face him wherever. You know, he can, I can I face him in Timbo too. I, I don't care. I don't care what we fight. That's my, you know, that's my fight. One last question on Quentin Jackson. Is there anything you didn't yeah. get to say to Quentin Jackson at Bellator 110 that you would like to say now? Nope, I'm going to say, man, I, it, it's time to, you know what I'm saying, everybody knows about beef, they know about history, but fighting, let's get it on there. Now, there's a good possibility of you facing Emmanuel Newton for a third time. Obviously, if you beat Winter Jackson and he defeats a Taylor Bay, how bad do you want that mm -hmm. fight, Mo? I think, I'm, I, think I'm, I think, I think, you know, I'll win it. You know, I thought I won the second one. I think I won the third one because I, I just think that, you know, I, I haven't figured it out. You know, I think I think that you know I could be a little more aggressive. I, I you know, like this. I I'll beat him. I thought I won the last fight three hundred two. This time I think I'll beat him more. Worse. Did you feel anything out from the second fight of him that you know that you can take no. him now? Yeah, yeah. The thing is, he wasn't landing nothing. He was the thing is, you notice I was throwing strike push kicks and flip kicks because he couldn't land nothing. So he couldn't land nothing. There was a lot of negative questions heading into your second bout with Emmanuel Newton. You know, the you got knocked out question. Was that starting to wear thin with you, Mo? Because I noticed you were starting to get a bit pissed off. You was constantly asked the same question over and over. Was you getting sick of hearing no, that question? That, that didn't bother me. I, 
I, it didn't bother me at all. I was like, all right, if I want to answer it, I'll, if I want to ask it, I'll keep answering it. It makes no difference because, you know, it, it's it's a question. I just, you know, I just answer, answer it and then be gone, you know. Well, that sort of takes me on to my next question. In a pre-fight interview you had with Frank Shamrock, uh, you seemed fairly blunt with Frank Shamrock in your response. Uh, you mentioned he was cutting in on your ring time. Uh, is there an issue between you and Frank Shamrock, or was it because he, you know, and you got knocked out, he asked that question again? Did that piss you off? No, it's not going to piss me off. You know, I, I, no, no one in the media pissed me off of myself. I don't, I don't care about, I don't really care about, like, you know, people say to me, because I control what I do. I, mean, I can't control what another man does. I have no problem with, you know, it's like, I'll just wait to go fight. I think Frank is cool. He's a legend, you know what I'm saying? Frank's in the game forever. And I respect Frank as a man and as a fighter. Was you like in fighting mode? Like Ken Shamrock, he always says he's like in the zone. He's ready to go and fight. You don't want nobody around you disturbing you. Yeah, well, you know, it's like that. It's like, you know, I was, I was sitting back there warming up, and I'm like, man, we're to go fight. Like, Mo, let's go. Mo, you're up to fight next. And I'm about to get up. Next thing I'm like, hey, Mo, do an interview real quick. Well, when you're, when someone tells you to a fight, and then you're in fight mode, and next thing you know, like, hey, you're interview. You, you, have no, you really have no patience for the damn interview. Yeah. Okay, random question before we leave. Would you ever consider a Crown versus Chain match against Quentin Jackson? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the pace, yeah. You put the crown on the line, Mo, honestly. Yeah. A Crown versus Chain, oh, yeah, put it on the line. If, if you lose, you'll never have to wear the crown again. You'll never be able to wear it. If, if Quentin loses, he'll never wear his chain again. I like that. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mo, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Is there right. anything you would like to say That's to the King Mo fans before we leave? Hey, man, y'all, y'all tune in from me versus Rampage. It'll be a great fight, and I guarantee you guys a victory. Okay, from MMA Crips Fighting Talk, thank you for watching. <laughs>